Hello everyone, welcome to Just Invest Today, and today we're going to talk about the 13 Fs of Lilu, Michael Burry, and Greg Alexander. So guys, we know it's 13 Fs season, Warren Buffett's going to probably post his 13 Fs soon today, and I'm probably going to do a review on that to see if he made any new changes, and Guy Spear, but let's go into these 13 Fs, see if we can find anything interesting or give us any clues on maybe stocks to buy in the future or stocks to look at or how are these investors thinking so let's get into the first person the first person i want to talk about is greg alexander and you got to remember there's not a lot about greg alexander but i think he was under bill ruane and that was a partner with uh, warren buffett like back in the day and he's the one who when warren buffett closed down his fund he recommends you that you give your money to bill ruane and Greg Alexander, I think, was under uh, Bill Ruane, uh, Sequoia Fund. So that says a lot. And then he says Warren Buffett said when he retires, he's like Seth Clareman, uh, Greg Alexander, Lee Lu are like the only people he would trust with his money. So there is some stature to Greg Alexander. Like he probably he knows what he's doing. So let's go under his portfolio and see what he's up to and what he's doing. So. First thing, so recent activity, wow, see, woo, so Greg Alexander bought 147% of Alibaba, $336 million, 20% of his portfolio, that's a huge stick, he is very bullish on Alibaba, which is, that. that's good to know, because remember, that's under the, the value investor tree of Charlie Munger, uh, Monish Pabrai now, and now we have Greg Alexander going heads first into Alibaba because they see the value. They see how undervalued this uh, the stock is. So that just puts an extra layer onto the Alibaba purchase and how like he thinks he's like, he thinks Alibaba is very um, a straight good company. So he reduces uh, Stellantis. That was the merger with uh, uh, what Fiat merged with um, uh, Peggy Out or something like that, some European uh, car company. So he reduced there six percent, five percent JD.com. Okay, thirty um, percent. Grub. He bought Grubhub. Wow. So I might take a look at Grubhub, but like Grubhub seems like one of those companies that is just. There's no, I don't, I don't see the benefit. I would have to probably dive deeper into it, but like, I would have to know right away. I can, it's easy to understand, but two, what's the competitive advantage of Grubhub compared to every everything else, like Uber Eats and all those other companies? Uh, what's the value there? So I'm very interested because he's a value investor. He has to know that Grubhub has some kind of competitive advantage to even like put his money in there, right? So. That's going to be an interesting thing to see if there's anything um, like solid about Grubhub. I'm going to look into it. Um, so that's Greg Alexander. The big news is Alibaba pretty much and everything else he's kind of reducing. He's kind of skimming off. So let's get into the next person. So Lee Lu. Li Lu didn't do anything pretty much. He reduced Facebook by 40%. Wow. This is a very interesting case because he recently bought Facebook in Q3 2020. Look. He bought 40 it was 40% of his portfolio in uh, Q3 2020. And then he sold in Q4 and now he's selling again. So he really cut half his stake in um, in Facebook, which is really weird when you think about it because when Lulu buys something, he's trying to hold it for five to ten years, and he's done massive research. He does he's all about intellectual honesty. So when he goes into a position, he know he tries to know everything about that company. So it's kind of weird that he would put his money in it and then sell it off, like. Because when you're selling off a position that quickly, that means that you fundamentally think you made a mistake. That's the only reason why you would sell, you would probably sell off your Facebook. Or he's just thinking, or, but there's a million things that you could be selling. Maybe he's just trying to skim it. Maybe he's just, you know, just trying to get some extra money. But that's very weird that you would 
go into Facebook so quickly and then sell it off because Lidu is not that type of an investor. So when you think about it in that type of aspect, it's kind of weird that he he bought in he bought in like he bought a strong position, fourteen percent, and then he's selling off right away. So I'm not sure if he just thinks it's a, it was a mistake and he got in too quickly. He didn't really understand the company. I don't know, but it's a very interesting play. But PDD, that's an interesting company. I would probably have to do more research on PDD because people saying PDD has a lot of potential and a lot of value. I wonder where PDD is now, though. Uh, $116, right? So I think he got it around, he probably got it around, like, he definitely got it higher than that, like around 140 150 So we can potentially buy PDD at a cheaper multiple than Li Lu, which is, <laughs> that's pretty significant. But at the same time, it's not a big position. So I don't know if that's like a, it's not really a high conviction bet in the grand scheme of things. So I wouldn't even want to know if I would follow into that investment yet because he doesn't even, I don't even think he believes that it's a strong, strong investment. Or he even puts in money just so he can actually understand the business more. Like, he, he will buy it and then try to understand the business even more. And then even if the price goes up, he's still comfortable of buying more. If Because that means he just understands the business more. He said this. He buys more even if it goes up because he understands the business more and he's more confident. So we should watch this position to make sure um, that he he believes in it because I actually want to look into PDD, see what they do, see what their, their advantages is compared to everything else, like Baba and JD and all those other companies. Like, what's the difference? Um, so let's go to the last one. Who is it? Michael Burry. So Michael Burry is the most interesting investor we have, guys. Like, he's the most crazy investor. He, he he's It feels like he's very precise and like scientific with his like stocks that he picks like he definitely has some kind of screener to screen for these companies i want to do it probably do a, video, a separate video on like all these buys but you can you know i just know off the top of my head like these pop these companies are probably undervalued because remember he buys these undervalued companies and he just sells them right away like after he just reduces his position very quickly so so Michael Burry is just a very interesting case of an investor. He knows what he's doing. He goes into these uh, probably these very undervalued positions, and he sells them when they probably make a little bump. And he has his his own like long term kind of portfolio or his few stocks that he probably thinks for the long term are good. But on the side, he's just making these quick buys, quick money, uh, and these nice plays. Guys, this is a quick update, guys. Man, just. 13F season is always so exciting to see what people are buying because, guys, use this as a time to look at the companies they're buying, see if you can understand the plays, and see if they have a competitive advantage, and maybe you can find one of these companies and actually uh, get into one of them. And it can provide a huge benefit because you already know they screen for these stocks. So these stocks are probably supreme compared to like other stocks that no one has bought or no one has even thought of. But, yeah, so... Yeah, just do your research, uh, look at these companies, see what you like or what you don't like. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, like it, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do more 13Fs, but yeah, like my channel, subscribe, and I'll get back to you in the next video. Peace.